Hey guys, so today I'm going to be telling you about uptrust and flotation, which is the last lesson on the topic of pressure, at least so far for pressure on what we're doing at the moment. It may be that I do something else about pressure later on. So we are going to figure out what is the way that I can figure out if an object is going to float or sink, okay? Now, let's some, get some definitions right. Number one, uptrust. Uptrust, by definition, is the upward force on an object due to the fluid they are in. The uptrust is caused by the pressure of the fluid, okay? When I get an object in a fluid, what is going to happen is there's going to be pressure all around the object. The pressure on the side is exactly the same. Now, because the fluid has uh, some length, it means that one part of the fluid, the top, is going to be at a different depth than the bottom of the fluid. And we have learned that density increases with depth. Remember when we spoke about that? Go on the video on the pressure in fluids. Now, pressure by definition in terms of formulas as well. So you can think about it in terms of the number of particles and that you have more particles um, at higher uh, depths and therefore pressure is higher. You can also think in terms of the formula. Remember some videos ago when I told you about pressure in liquids, I said that pressure equals H, the height where the liquid is, times rho, the density of the liquid, times g, the gravitational field strength. This is on the top. When I go on the bottom of my object, I have exactly the same formula. However, h, the height where my object is, or the depth where my object is, is now h, the height in the beginning, plus l, which is the length of the full object. So I have a higher depth. So mathematically speaking, or thinking in terms of particles, you can see that the pressure is always bigger on the bottom that is on the top, okay? Now, because the force up, trying to pull the object up, is bigger than the force it, trying to make the object down, this is going to make an overall net force, which is called Fb. This Fb is the net force on the fluid and is called the buoyant force, okay? So I can talk in terms of upthrust or buoyant force. Now, because my force trying to make my object going up is bigger than my object going down, then my object has the tendency in this case to go up and to float, okay? And this is again because in this case the pressure is greater at the bottom, hence the fluid exerts a net upward force that is going to be on the top, okay? We are going to see that pressure, although in fluids, pressure is always bigger at the bottom than on the top of that object or where the object is, what is going to happen is that sometimes the weight of the object may have an effect and the object may still sink even though there is a higher pressure on the bottom, okay? So, let's try to explain uptrust. Think about it. When you place an object under water or any fluid, the level of the water of the container ri rises, okay? And the volume of the water that is displaced, so that rises or that leaves the container in case the container is not large enough, is equal to the volume of the object, okay? This is actually how you can measure density of irregular shapes. You can figure out the volume, density is mass over volume, you can figure out the volume of the object by placing it under water and looking at the displaced water or collecting the displaced wa water in a measuring cylinder and that's going to give you the volume. You get the mass from the measuring scale and then you just do mass over volume, okay? So, when you place an object under water, some water is going to be displaced. Again, because those particles need to go somewhere, you're applying a downward force and an upward force, uh, or the, the liquid is applying that, but some of the water had to be displaced. Now, let's just make sense of these formulas in here. Fb is my buoyant force, okay? And it's going to be equal to the resultant force of F1 trying to pull the object down to make it sink, and F2 trying to make the object to float. So my resultant force is my buoyant force or my upthrust, okay? And my upthrust or resultant force is going to be the force trying to make, uh, force of the fluid trying to make the object to go up, so upwards in that uh, the upward direction, minus the force of the water or any fluid downwards. Again, in this case, you can see that I have the object that has a certain volume and length um, the different parts of the object, the top and the bottom, are at different heights or depths. Remember that pressure equals the height or depth times roll 
the density of the fluid times g the gravitational field strength because pressure is that force which is pressure times area is going to be for the first force the force on the top p1 pressure in one times the area surface area which is h1 the first height or depth where the fluid is or the object is on the fluid times rho times g times a okay so far so so good pressure times area f2 my second force is p2 the pressure on the bottom times the surface area again so far so so good that's going to be h2 the second depth times rho times g times a now if you look at the picture h1 and h2 are different they have different values and my object is at different parts of the liquid so therefore remember pressure increases with depth this formula shows it just like that or you can think in terms of particles okay the number of particles making a weight on a particular particle at a certain depth okay so my force two again is bigger than force one okay so how do i know if an object floats or sinks i know the basics of calculating the forces how do i make the decision well an object is going to float when the weight of the object is equal to the up thrust and an object is going to sink when the weight of the object is greater than the up thrust so let's see how i can do that okay oh you can also figure out if something floats or sinks by using the density of the fluid so for example the density of water is one gram per centimeter cubed so if something has a density that is less than that number and is put on water it will float in water examples are polystyrene wood and as you can see the bigger the density or the closer to one the closer that object is going to be from sinking but still floating so wood has more water covering it than on the top of it okay because the density is 0 0.7 close to one polystyrene has 0.01 so the amount of water that it displaces is very very little However, iron has a density of 8 grams per centimeter cubed, so it will definitely float in water. So, I figure out if something floats or sinks by looking at the density of the object or if I'm given forces by checking uh, the difference in between the weight and the up thrust. If the weight is bigger than the up thrust, it's going to sink. Just for your information, mercury. Mercury is a metal and therefore is quite dense. It is actually liquid at room temperature and the density is much greater than the density of water so things are going to float on mercury very very easily okay you can put something like a heavy table on a, sp a specific amount of volume of mercury and things are going to float okay now going back so density floating and sinking so the density has an effect whether an object floats or sinks because the pressure on the liquid increases with increase of density as well as increase in depth and we know that because the formula let me show it in here is density has to do with the depth height times rho the density of the fluid times g times a so density is also going to have an effect now we know as well or i told you that up thrust equals to the weight of the displaced liquid so if the weight of the displaced liquid is going to be smaller than the weight of the object then that means that more liquid is going to go up than the amount of uh, object that is going to go down therefore the object is going to sink if the weight of the object is smaller than the weight of the displaced liquid then something like this happens and the object floats okay so floating if the object is less dense than the liquid then the weight of the liquid it displaces is larger than the weight of the object so weight of the object smaller than the up thrust of the object and then sink the, the so i have this slide here for you to take notes the sink if the object is more dense than the liquid then the weight of the liquid it displaces is smaller than the weight of the object so because the weight of the object is bigger than the up thrust on the object then this means that the um, object is going to sink okay or the weight of the displaced liquid was smaller than the weight of the object so these are the rules okay think in terms of density think in terms of um the the up thrust think about of the weight of the um, of the displaced liquid or fluid okay and see which is bigger this is all about forces now the last thing that i need to tell you is to show you that up thrust is in fact the weight of the displaced liquid 
So, some lessons ago, I told you that the pressure difference was going to be equal to L rho G. L stands for the depth or the height where you are. Rho is going to be the density of the liquid. G is the gravitational field strength. You also know that force equals pressure times area. So, if I want to know the difference in the upward and the downward force, meaning the buoyant or the upthrust, then this is going to be the upthrust as is written in there. So, I do pressure times area. So, I do L times rho times G. So, I get it right from the pressure different formula times A for area. So, times A. Now, the length of something, the height of something times the surface area of that something gives me the volume. So this formula becomes V rho G because L times A gives me V the volume. Now, again, if you think about the formula for density, it says that density equals mass times the uh, mass over volume. So mass is density times volume. So V rho G is the same as Mg because mass is the density times the volume. Mg happens to be the weight of the displaced liquid. So you just showed that the trap tr up thrust is equal to the weight of the displaced liquid. So if the up thrust or the weight of the displaced liquid is smaller than the weight of the object, then the object is going to sink. If it's not, the object is going to float. I hope it made sense. I know that this is not as easy to see from a distance without me showing some stuff in the classroom and without us doing some exercises. So I do appreciate if this lesson is not as clear as other lessons, but I hope that at least it helped clarify a little bit, okay? As always, you know how to reach me in case you have questions and up to my next video. Be happy and healthy. Bye!